Hello and welcome everyone. Welcome to this RSET webinar on using earth observations to monitor water budgets for river basin management. I'm Amita Mehta and along with my colleague Sean McCartney, we will be present this training. As you can see, this is part two. Last year, we presented an introductory webinar on the same topic. And during our post-training survey, we received several requests that there was an interest in working with these data, getting more hands-on experience in working with remote sensing and modeling data, which can help in monitoring uh, water budget components. And that's why this more advanced webinar is planned. So the overall objectives are to identify and access remote sensing and earth system model data for estimating water budgets in the river basin, replicate the steps for estimating water budgets for a river basin and subwatershed using remote sensing products and GIS, and understand the source of uncertainties involved in estimating water budgets for river basins. And this last part is very important because um, conceptually, uh, Estimating water budget seems easier, but because of the variety of data sets used, uh, availability of data sets, their quality and uh, uncertainties in those data sets contribute greatly to water budget estimation. And it's really a very difficult problem as most of you probably know. So when we go through this webinar, one of the major objectives is to see uh, what kind of uh, uncertainty sources are there for estimating water budget. There will be three sessions. Today we will review and access uh, earth observations and earth system model data for river basin monitoring and management. Then next two sessions, it's mostly working with this data, uh, doing hands-on exercises on your computer, uh, download, uh, downloading data and using those data in GIS to look at water budget components. So next session will be for water budget estimation using remote sensing observations. So can we use various satellite observations and estimate water budget? And then the last session will be to do the same using a global land data assimilation model version. So this is the overall outline. And this is the training format here. All three, ses three sessions are about two hours each. Uh, there will be two parts. First part is presentations and demonstrations of data access, calculations, and analysis. And the second part would be lab, lab time for all of you for hands-on uh, computer-based exercises. Uh, the exercises and step-by-step -step exercises are provided uh, on our website as well as through this meeting portal that you can download and work on the exercise in the lab time. There will be three homeworks, one after each session, and these assignments will be available after the session is over from the RSET website. And the due dates are given here, 11th, 18th, and 25th August for uh, first, second, and third homework assignment. There will be a certificate of completion awarded to those who attend all webinars and complete all homework assignments. And the certificate uh, will be sent by Marina Smartins in about two months after the completion of this series. So there, uh, there are a couple of prerequisites here which will help in moving smoothly through this webinar series. So first of all, fundamentals of remote sensing, uh, that there has to be some background of when we use different jargons, you would know uh, once you've taken this webinar, fundamentals of remote sensing. The second one is the one that I mentioned earlier, that is introductory webinar on monitoring water budgets for river basin management. This has um, a detail of how to manage uh, river basin, what is required, all different data sets are discussed there, and there are also some demonstrations of using these data sets. So these two webinars will really help in going through this webinar uh, very smoothly. Um, then there was a introductory webinar on groundwater monitoring uh, using GRACE missions. That was offered um, a month ago or so, and that focuses 
specifically on uh, groundwater data and we are going to use data from this missions. So if you haven't gone through this webinar, we recommend that you also view this uh, webinar so that you can easily work with GRACE data and you know uh, where, uh, how accurate these data are, what are the limitations, what are the advantages of these data sets. Also, you will require a username and password to register or to log into NASA Earth Data Portal. This is the portal where you will be downloading data from. Also, you need, inst uh, need to install QGIS uh, version 3. Point whatever is the current version or any from 3.6 onwards. Uh, if you have that, uh, that would be sufficient. Uh, so you have to have QGIS and then there is a um, instruction here at this link how to do that. There are other relevant RSET webinars. They will, might be helpful. One is uh, river basin delineation based on NASA digital elevation data. Uh, this helps in deciding if you want uh, different levels of watersheds within the river basin, how would you delineate them using uh, hydrosheds tool? And so that's a useful webinar. Also, there was an advanced webinar working with um, GPM iMERGE precipitation reanalysis data. So these are all uh, useful webinars which can help you towards this current webinar also. With that, we will start with today's session. Uh, we'll start with a brief introduction of RSET for those of you who are new. Then we will have a review of water budget in a river basin. And then the review of data for water budget estimation from remote sensing observations and global land data assimilation system or GLDAS. Then finally, we will have demonstrations. Uh, we'll show remote sensing and GLDAS data download procedure. And we will focus on a case study. We will look at a Limpo, uh, river basin in southern Africa. That's Limpopo River Basin. Uh, we will talk about this basin when we go through the demonstration part. But this is the case study. It's, it's like uh, it's not a very large river basin, but it's not a small river basin either. And that's why we have picked this um, case study. So through this case study, uh, we will see how to use different data sets to look at water budget components. Uh, later on, you can use the same procedure to um, apply to a river basin or watershed of your own interest. Now, I also want to emphasize before we start this webinar is that the idea here is to show various data sets as well as the procedure to estimate water budget components and get some idea of how uh, water budget is changing from season to season and you can do that for year to year also. So emphasis is on introducing data and going through procedure and then we will see how uh, we can gauge um, uncertainties in, in these data sets and, and water budget estimation. So about RSET. So RSET's goal is to increase the use of earth science in decision making. And so the trainings are meant for policymakers, environmental managers, and other professionals in public and private sectors. All the material that we present are freely available, um, and they're available through the RSET website. Um, if you use the methods and data presented in RSET trainings, we request that you acknowledge uh, NASA Applied Remote Sensing Training Program for that. But then you can use it and customize, customize uh, the material for your own use. Here's a quick look at how many trainings RSET has done in uh, close to uh, more than 10 years, about 150 plus trainings, uh, trained more than 40,000 participants from 170 countries uh, with more than 7,500 organizations. And as you can see, uh, after 2015, uh, a lot of people have joined RSET webinars. That's what the size of this bubble show. To learn more about RSET, you can visit the website. There is also a listserv that you can sign up uh, to stay up to date with RSET activities. All the material for today's webinar are also available from this website. So now we will start with review of water budget in a river basin. So first, what is a river basin? 
and I'm going to start this animation here. It shows Mississippi River Basin. It's an area of land that drains water into a river and its tributaries. So a river basin usually has multiple drainage catchments as you can see here. This is the river and these are various tributaries. And there are so various drainage catchments or watersheds separated by ridges and hills called the drainage divide. And each watershed in a river basin collects rain and or snow water and drains it to a common outlet such as a stream, a tributary, lake or wetland and eventually they all contribute to the river. So that uh, uh, makes a river basin that contributes to the river eventually. And the river basin consists of surface water as well as underlying groundwater. Importance of river basin management is that for water allocation and distribution and sharing among states, regions, within a country or among various countries in the same river basin, river basin has to be managed, it's cru crucial. And there are about 263 transboundary river basins covering roughly half the earth's surface. And so a lot of countries and a lot of uh, people have claim on the same river. There are about 155 states which have territory within transboundary lake or river basins and about 30 countries lie entirely within them. And since 1948, there are about 37 incidents of conflict over water and approximately 295 international water agreements have been signed. So water is a very precious commodity and that's why river basin management is crucial not only for transboundary rivers, but even within countries, within states, uh, it's very important. So for river basin management, uh, primarily what we require is um, availability of water in the basin and demand of water in the basin. So it's basically demand and um, supply uh, that we have to know to manage uh, water. And here is the schematic of what uh, water components are there in the river basin. Uh, so you can see that there is uh, precipitation, there could be snow melt, um, there is soil layer which holds moisture, there is aquifer and groundwater uh, that can have water, there are streams, there are lakes. So these are all uh, water components in the basin and for use um, there are industries, there is agriculture, and there is domestic use. So there are multiple usages of water. And so knowing the source of water and then the demand of water, how it is used, that has to be balanced for uh, efficient management. Water availability depends on basin hydrology and ecology and is influenced significantly by weather and climate. So monitoring water availability within a river basin is really crucial for efficient management as we just saw. Now it's important to note that when you talk about water management in a basin it is quantity as well as quality but for this webinar we are going to focus on quantity and look at different water budget components, uh, quality component, uh, quantity components I'm sorry. So river basin management also requires accurate identification and delineation of watersheds and stream channels within a basin based, in, based on terrain and slope. Uh, then characteristics of the basin, that means soil, vegetation, lakes and reservoirs within the basins, aquifer and groundwater storage. So these have to be known. And information about water demand such as residential, use agricultural demands and industrial use within the basin. So these factors have to be known. For this webinar, we will focus on the application of remote sensing based data for monitoring water budget components in river basins. So we will focus mostly on the supply part that how water is um, available through different components and how it is distributed within the basin. So for monitoring water availability in river basins, um, so any water flow in streams within the basin, it requires information, observations, modeling uh, for different components in the basin. And these are the components. So uh, they contribute to overall uh, 
water availability. So precipitation is the major source in a river basin. In addition to runoff, which is coming in uh, from outside and uh, also living so that that net runoff uh, that is either source or sink for the river basin. Then evaporation and transpiration or evapotranspiration uh, that is a sink of water to the basin. It is water that is lost to the atmosphere from the basin. Infiltration is the water that seeps into uh, the ground and uh, stays in soil layers and then as, as water storage and then there is water that goes deep within uh, from the rocks and uh, cracks between and becomes uh, groundwater. So these are the components which uh, give information or about how much water is available in a river basin. And uh, what you see in the river or discharge that you see is resulting from these components. So for monitoring um, overall water budget components, all of monitoring all these uh, variables is important and the list shows here that precipitation, surface water such as soil moisture and reservoir, groundwater, these are available from remote sensing observations. Evapotranspiration, it can be calculated based on other observable geophysical parameters including remote sensing also. Infiltration which depends on soil characteristics, uh, soil moisture, terrain, slope, all these uh, are available uh, partly from satellite and they can also be observed by combination of different um, observations. And then runoff which really uh, cannot be uh, observed efficient, efficiently but can be calculated based on a water balance equation. So water balance equation uh, is shown here. So precipitation which is the source um, it's equal to evapotranspiration, uh, change in uh, water storage in the basin, uh, which includes all the way from surface to the groundwater, and then this is discharge that is uh, runoff. And so this is the equation uh, that each component is usually monitored to estimate how uh, water situation is evolving in a river basin. And so we will see some of these parameters from different sources uh, throughout this webinar series. And so what we're going to do is we're going to look at remote sensing observations and global land data assimilation system which provide all these uh, components and then we are going to work with those. So with that, let's review remote sensing and GLDAS data for water budget estimation that we are going to use. So here is a table or a list of uh, water budget components from different satellites with a temporal coverage. Um, and so you can see that precipitation is available from TRIM and GPM satellites and acronyms are defined here. Uh, snow cover, evapotranspiration can be derived from sensors from Terra and Aqua. These two are satellites. And as you can see, these satellites, most of them are long-term. Um, some of them are at least five years old, such as SMAP. So uh, soil moisture, uh, active passive, or that provides soil moisture. Uh, terrestrial water storage change from GRACE and GRACE follow-on missions. And reservoir height. It can be available from altimeters based on JSON 2 and 3 satellites. They are also available from about 2008 onwards. There is also past data available from JSON 1. So these satellites provide uh, observations of different um, water budget components. However, not only they have a different temporal coverage, uh, their temporal sampling also is different. For example, TRIM and GPM data combined with other satellites provide um, half hourly to three hourly data sets as the highest resolution all the way to Landsat that provides data every 16 days. So not only temporal uh, resolutions are different here, they all have different spatial resolutions as well. And a lot of details of this can be found in the Fundamentals of Remote Sensing webinar that we just mentioned earlier. 
So again, not going into great detail, this is mostly for your information and reference that the satellites that we just saw, uh, they have various sensors. Um, precipitation is derived from microwave radar and radiometer. Uh, there are optical sensors such as MODIS, ETM, and OLI on Terran, Aqua, and Landsat. They provide uh, radiation visible and near and middle infrared. Uh, SMAP is a microwave radiometer for soil moisture. GRACE also is microwave radar system in K band. And JSON is an altimeter in C band and KU band. So, as you can see, uh, sources, spectral measurements are different for different satellites and sensors. And they are used to derive uh, water budget components that we just saw in previous slide. Again, the fundamental webinar, uh, fundamentals webinar has information about these sensors and satellites. So satellite data products that we will use for this webinar is going to be combination of trim and GPM precipitation. Specifically, it is the integrated multi-satellite retrievals of GPM or iMERGE, and that is available actually at half hour daily and monthly time scale on one tenth degree special resolution. We will use evapotranspiration from Terra and Aqua Modis. Uh, the product name is uh, for Terra and Aqua, it's mod 16A2 or MYD 16A2. The resolution here is 500 meters. They are available either on eight daily scale or on annual scale. And then terrestrial water storage that is available from this GRACE data and that's available at one degree resolution on monthly time scale. So next week when we look at water budget components, these are the products that we are going to use. Next, we are going to talk about land surface modeling. So LDAS, which helps in monitoring water budget components. There is a lot of information on this LDAS website here. Uh, what it provides, it, it integrates surface-based and remote sensing observations uh, in land surface model, and it solves for the interaction of energy, momentum, and mass between surface and the atmosphere, and provides uniformly graded frequent information of water and energy components. So LDAS provides quantities that are not directly observed by satellites such as runoff, uh, evapotranspiration also, it, it, it is derived based on satellite data, but LDAS also calculates evapotranspiration, also calculates snow water equivalence, which is not directly available from remote sensing. There are several versions of LDAS as shown here. Uh, there is global land data assimilation system, there is North American land data assimilation system. Um, this is specifically for famine early warning, FLDAS, and this is national climate assessment. We are going to use GLDAS data in this webinar. So we were going to focus on GLDAS version 2.1 and 2.2. When you go to the GLDAS, um, or web, LDAS website here, it gives you information of various versions of GLDAS. Not only that, within GLDAS versions, there are different uh, land surface model components. The one that we are going to use is this catchment land surface model or CLSM. And the two versions, GLDAS 2.1 and 2.2, both from CLSM, it is the one that we will use. Both these models use vegetation mask, land water mask, and leaf area index uh, from MODIS uh, for calculations of um, uh, different parameters. Both use forcing such as precipitation and meteorological data and surface radiation, but they use these data from different sources. Now GLDAS 2.2, it assimilates gray terrestrial water storage anomaly data in this catchment uh, model for simulation of land surface fields, while uh, GLDAS 2.1, it does not assimilate. So GLDAS 2.1 data are available from January 2000 to present, and GLDAS 2.2 data are available from 2003 to present. So uh, what we're going to look at is work on the exercise using GLDAS 2.1, 
but we will also look at some results from GLDAS 2.2 in the last session. So what we're going to use, so these are the inputs for these uh, precipitation. So here in GLDAS 2.1, it comes from Global Precipitation Climatology Project. This is a multi-satellite and gauge data. Uh, also meteorological data here are obtained from uh, National Center for Environmental Prediction or NSEP uh, Global Data Assimilation System. Uh, and for GLDAS 2.2, um, uh, this is coming from European Center for Medium Range Weather Forecasts or ECMWF. Um, lastly, it's the energy input or surface radiation uh, for GLDAS 2.1 comes from Air Force Weather Agency, whereas again GLDAS 2.2 uses everything from ECMWF. Now we decided to use GLDAS 2.1 for this exercise because uh, input data such as precipitation is also available here, the forcing data. For GLDAS 2.2, ECMWF data forcings are not available. So only available parameters are um, evapotranspiration, runoff, uh, these are, and, and groundwater. These are available and GRACE data are assimilated. So we will see some results, but we will mostly work with GLDAS 2.1. Also, it is important to note that these data uh, provide integrated output. So it's kind of, uh, in a way, it is balanced soil moisture, evapotranspiration, surface and subsurface runoff, and snow water equivalent. Uh, since both uh, GLDAS 2.1 and 2.2 versions uh, use satellite data forcing, such as from GPCP and 2.2 assimilates GRACE data, these data sets have latency. So there are early products in which these data are not used, but then later on these products are uh, updated when GPCP and GRACE data are available, and then the final version uh, has this information in it. So we will be using this final version where you have both these data available and included in the model. As you can see, both of them have parameters available except for precipitation in GLDAS 2.2. Uh, special and temporal resolutions are different. So 2.1 has one degree resolution, whereas 2.2 is quarter degree resolution. These are three hourly and monthly data. These are daily data available so far. So ideally, uh, uh, you know, daily data would be uh, used, should be used to check a water balance every day and then accumulate over a season or a year. But for simplicity of calculation, we are going to use monthly data so that it's easy to work with for now and at least the procedure is understood. You can use the same procedure with the daily data or even three hourly data. So with that, uh, okay, so going back again, what we will do uh, before we start the demonstration of um, some data download, what we're going to do is today we are just going to download all the data that we're going to use in session two and three for actually estimating water budget components and looking at water budget. So that includes um, data from satellites. So we will have um, GPM, MODIS, and GRACE data download, as well as we will download GLDAS 2.1 data. And so what we're going to do is we're going to have a demonstration for downloading this data for Limpopo River Basin. And here is just um, some information about this, um, this basin. Uh, here is a website where you can find details about this river basin. It's located in Southern Africa. It's a transboundary river passing through several countries like Botswana, Mozambique, South Africa, and Zimbabwe. And each country has significant portion of this river. Uh, largest is in South Africa. And the total area, drainage area is about 408 to 50 kilometers square. Actual number of major basins are 27. Based on our classification using hydrosheds, uh, we are going to use a uh, river basin delineation where there are nine major basins and you will work with that uh, during week 
uh, two and three. Um, the sub basins um, they they are in semi arid regions, and so they have huge seasonal differences as well as interannual differences in precipitation and other water budget components. So the goal is to look at basin averaged budget, but we will also try and see can we see details within the sub basins. So that is what our aim is. And with that, what we're going to do is start our demonstration um, of downloading data. After uh, we do this demonstration, you will work through exercise one. All the step-by-step -step instructions are given. So whatever we are showing here will be provided there in instructions and you can follow those steps. Also, for the demonstration, we're going to use year 2015-16 and for your exercise, you will use the same basin, but you will use year 2018 and 19. For now, we are picking two seasons, wet season where uh, larger maximum precipitation is there, that is December, January and February and June, July and August are the dry months. So we will be downloading data between December and um, August, September roughly. So that's what the demonstration is going to be. We'll start with uh, iMERGE precipitation and MODIS ET first and then we will look at GRACE and GLDAS data and, and see how to download these data. So um, I'm going to hand over this demonstration part to uh, Sean McCartney. He is going to show how to download iMERGE precipitation and MODIS ET data. So again, you will need to register um, on on um, NASA Earth data to be able to download all these data sets. So with that, I'm going to uh, share my screen with you, uh, stop this presentation, and um, Sean McCartney will start with the demonstration. Sean? Thanks, Amita. For the first part of this demonstration, we will be downloading seasonal iMERGE precipitation data from the Giovanni website. We'll be subsetting the data for the wet and dry seasons in the Limpopo River Basin. The wet season runs roughly from December through February, and the dry season runs roughly from June through August. First, we'll go to the Giovanni website using the link provided. You will need to log in to Giovanni using your Earth Data username and password. I've already done so. Once logged in, we can go to the Select Plot option, and we'll select Map Accumulated this provides total precipitation computed over time for a given grid cell. Since we're interested in the wet season for 2016, I'll go ahead and enter December 1st, 2015 as the start date. And then for the end date, I'm going to end the end of the wet season, which is uh, February of uh, end of February. Under the Select Region, we'll click on the blue icon to select a shape from Giovanni's Database of Shapes. We'll type in Limpopo Watershed, and then we can click on the highlighted selected watershed. And then we can zoom into that and pan to it, and we can see that, in fact, the River Basin is delineated in Giovanni. For, t for a keyword, we're going to type iMERGE final monthly. And we'll click search. Next, we'll select the variable for the iMERGE product. And then we need to make sure that we're going to change the units to millimeters per month. Now that we have all of our parameters set, we'll click Plot Data. As stated earlier, Giovanni is calculating accumulated precipitation over the rainy season for this region of Africa, uh, in this case, the Limpopo River Basin. Now that we have our result plotted, we can download the data by clicking on Download and selecting GeoTIFF. 
I will save the file to my working folder on the desktop. And it's always good to give it a, an appropriate name. In this case, we'll name it imerge underscore December 15 to February 16. And again, this will be a TIFF file. And I'll go ahead and I'll save that file to my working directory. Once we've done that, we can return to our data selection by clicking back to data selection in the bottom right hand corner. And now we want to get the dry season for 2016. So the parameters that I'll change here will be the month and the year for the start date. So this will collect all accumulated precipitation from June through August. And I'll go ahead and click plot data again. Giovanni is a great tool because it provides a convenient interface to subset and download precipitation data from NASA. Once the plot is ready, I'll go ahead and download the file, uh, similar to what I did last time. Click make sure I select GeoTIFF, and then I will navigate to my working directory on the desktop, and then again I'm going to give it an appropriate name. This time I'm going to call it iMerge, and we'll call it June through August. 2016. And then I'll go ahead and save that to my working directory. For the second part of this demonstration, I'll be walking you through the process of downloading MODIS evapotranspiration data from the application for extracting and exploring analysis ready samples or appears. First, we'll go to the appears website using the link provided. Then we'll log in using the Earth Data login credentials. Appears offers a simple and efficient way to access and transform geospatial data from a variety of federal data archives. For this demo, we'll be extracting data from an area sample. To do so, we'll click on Extract from the menu and then click on Area Sample. We will start a new request by clicking on the icon. And since we're downloading data for the wet and dry seasons, I'll give this request an appropriate name, such as MODIS evapotranspiration December 15 through February of 16. Appears provides the option of using a vector polygon for defining the study area. We'll use the zipped shapefile, which you can acquire from the RSET website, to delineate the study area. Click on the Click Here text highlighted in blue and add the zipped shapefile you downloaded from the web page for this training. I've already added the zipped shapefile to my working directory. Once it's been uploaded, you will see the polygon represented in the map. For the start and end dates, I'll specify the same date range comprising the wet season from December 2015 through the end of February 2016. For the layers, I'll type mode 16, no space, and you can see the three options appear. I'll choose the top option, which is the Terra Modus Evapotranspiration, and then for the different products that they provide, I'll be choosing the Evapotranspiration at 500 meters. As you can see, this is an eight-day product, which, rep which is represented by Julian Days. The Julian day for each MODIS image represents the first day of the eight-day composite. For output options, I'll leave the default as for file format as GeoTIFF, and for the projection, I will specify a geographic projection, and then I will click Submit. 
An email notification will be delivered to your inbox letting you know the order has been placed and a second email will be delivered with links to download the requested data. Now that we have uh, evapotranspiration data for the wet season, we'll repeat the process for the dry season. We will give our second order an appropriate name. In this case, I'll give it the name June 16 through August 16. And we will specify the, the month and year to coincide with that. So now that we've established our date range for the dry season, we can then leave all the other parameters as default, and then we can go to click Submit again to place our second order for the dry season for 2016. I'll now hand the presentation back to Amita to demonstrate how to acquire the rest of the data for this training. Thank you, Sean, for the demonstration. Uh, so we saw how to download precipitation and evapotranspiration from remote sensing observations like iMERGE and MODIS. Uh, next water component that we are going to look at is terrestrial water storage anomalies. And we're going to do so from the GRACE mission. And also during the exercise, we will download the same data from GRACE follow-on mission. The last part of this demonstration then will show how to get all the water budget components including precipitation, evapotranspiration, uh, terrestrial water storage, and surface runoff from Global Land Data Assimilation System, uh, version 2.1. In the last week, when we use this data, we will also briefly see how to access GLDAS version 2.2 data, which is the newest GLDAS version. So we'll start with the GRACE uh, terrestrial water storage anomaly data, and for that, also, you need NASA Earth Data account, uh, so you can log in and download the data. We'll start with this GRACE JPL site. Briefly, just to show that there is mission information available here, uh, applications and publications, a lot of information about the mission, GRACE and GRACE follow -on can be found here. There's a get data link here, which takes you to multiple data sets. There is also a straightforward way of going to search for this GRACE data, and that is to go to this uh, physical oceanography DAC. Uh, here there is a search window where you can type GRACE and search for GRACE data. And it takes you to all the GRACE data sets available from this site. You will see that there is uh, GFC, Talus, Grace Level 3, Monthly Land Water Equivalent Thickness. Similar data are available from JPL as well. So these data are actually terrestrial uh, water storage anomalies. So there is a reference period with respect to which you get uh, monthly anomalies in change in total water. So that is surface and groundwater. So we are going to look at this. Um, it, and it's represented as water equivalent thickness. So we're going to look at this data. When you click on the data, we'll be taken to the data access page. And here is a link, it says data access. You just click on it and it has multiple options of how to download these data. We are going to use Podag Drive where all the monthly terrestrial water storage anomalies from GRACE and GRACE follow on can be found. So these are monthly data, as you can see. Um, uh, this is the credit level three data, the start date and end date for a particular month, uh, year. So these are Julian days. Um, this is from GRACE, this is from JPL. Uh, this is uh, about the algorithm type. This is release number six. This is for land and this is version three. So these files are available as NetCDF, TIFF as well as, as text uh, files. And we are going to download TIFF format files so that we can analyze with QGIS. As I mentioned earlier, we're going to look at dry and wet season of 2015-16. So we're going to go sc scroll down to 2015 and 16 and find 
first December 2015, then January, February 2016, according to their Julian days. So for December, actually start day should be 335, but sometimes some days are missing. And so it may not start exactly at 335, as you will see in this case. That it starts here from 346 and ends in 2016-3. Now, information about this start and end date, are, they are available from this link that you will see in your exercise. You can go by month and year and what are the start and end date for each year available. So according to that, once you locate the file, this is for December. We are going to download TIFF file. You can just click on the file and then save it on your computer. Uh, for uh, simplicity, you can uh, give a name, uh, which is uh, gr for grace underscore total water storage. And this is December 18, uh, December 15. So you can shorten the name and save on your computer. You can create a, a directory where you want to save this data and you can save this file. I have already saved this file. So you can follow this procedure to save these files. Next, you can go down to this is January tip file. You can do the same. And then there is Next one is the February. This is February for 2016. So you can click on each of these files and save. And here you can say GRTWS February of 16. So you can give any name, but this is the name that we have used uh, for uh, simplicity. And then you can save that file. Similarly, um, you, you will also download March because uh, we, we will see later how we calculate total water storage change from month to month. And for that, you need one more month than your season. So you're going to also download next TIFF. This is for March. So you can download March TIFF also. Um, then go down to June, July, August, and September. So this is... Uh, day 153 this is june then july and so so forth so in your exercise you will be doing this for year 18 19 so you will follow similar julian days and download the data but basically once you go to this list you just have to click and save these files so this is how you are going to save uh, gray star steel water storage anomalies on your computer which we will analyze in next session so that's uh, it for the grace data and next what we are going to do is see uh, how to download gldas version 2.1 water budget components so for downloading gldas water budget components uh, we will be using this GES disk portal. You click and open the link. You will be taken to the GES disk site. You can take a tour if you have not used this site. It, it provides um, information about features of this site. Um, also, you will have to log in again using uh, NASA Earth Data uh, registration information. Once you do that, you can explore or uh, search here and say GLDAS and it comes up with the list of GLDAS data available. We are going to use GLDAS monthly data from catchment land surface model at one degree resolution and this is version 2.1. As we talked earlier, there is this early product also available because of the data latency of forcing um, Data, these data um, are not up to date. Early products are up to date, but we're going to use this um, GLDAS CLSM10M 2.1. So click on the data set and search. It takes you to the link to this data set. You can click on this link. 
Now here is there is information about this particular uh, version of model and data. Also there is data citation available, documentation, detailed documentation is available here. And for product summary, you can see it is one degree by one degree resolution. Its original format is NetCDF. There's a global coverage and the temporal coverage is 2000 January to March 2020. And this is monthly data. For this portal, it allows special and temporal subsetting. So we are going to use this subset get data link. It takes you to this selection window for download method. We're going to choose get file subsets using the GES disk subsetter. Now for Grace data, we downloaded global file because at that portal, uh, we did not have a special uh, selection or subsetting option. Here we do. So for GLDAS data, we're going to uh, focus on Limpopo River Basin. So here, first let's start with date range. Again, for this demonstration, we're going to use, you can either enter date here or use the calendar. Uh, here you can 2016, September, 30. So we are going to look at December 2015, January, February, March of 2016 for wet season and for dry season it is going to be June, July, August and September of uh, 2016. So this period is chosen here. For refined region here approximate latitude longitude covering Limpopo Basin are uh, given here. So 25 uh, east to 35 east and minus 27 south to minus 19 south and it highlights the region that we picked. This covers Limpopo River Basin. Then you can also pick variables you want to download. The model has quite a few uh, water and energy related variables. We are going to pick water budget components. So here are the components. Now let's go down and see here for downloading there are options. You can have NetCDF file and then you can pick multiple parameters and download NetCDF file. If you want to save these parameters as geotiff files then you have to select only one variable so one variable at a time and so that is what we are going to pick because it's easier to work with geotiff data here um, and so this is evapotranspiration so pick evapotranspiration and you can say get data Okay, it takes a few minutes, but once um, the data are, are extracted, you see this subsetted file here. Again, this is for December 15 all the way to September of 2016. So all these monthly files in TIFF formats are there. And again, you can just click on here and save on your computer. Again, for simplicity, I'm going to use, let's see, save into this GLDAS directory and save as GLDAS 2.1. This is ET and this is December 15. So you can save this file. So this is just a short name, so we can, descriptive name. And so you can give any name, but this is what I have used. So you can save this file. Similarly, you can click through each of them and save accordingly. So this is 
uh, January of 16 all the way to September of 16. Once you do that, you can go back to select parameters and refine parameters. And the variable you want to pick now is uncheck evapotranspiration. Go down and look for you have total precipitation. You can pick that. Then pick storm surface runoff. So one after another, you will pick total precipitation, then surface runoff. Then you can also look at base flow groundwater runoff. As we will see, this is a very small quantity, almost negligible, but you can check it out. So you can download that. And there is also um, TWS, which is terrestrial water storage. So download that. So you will be downloading uh, parameters ET, then surface runoff, base flow runoff, total precipitation, and a terrestrial water storage. All these you can download one at a time for December 15 to September uh, 2016 and save them as your TIFF file. Now, I also want to uh, show that if you uh, pick NetCDA file, then you can pick all of them at the same time. Um, so you can pick uh, evapotranspiration, total rainfall, storm, surface runoff, base flow runoff, and TWS. And then you can get data, go through the same procedure. It's extracting the data and you can get all of them in NetCDF format. You can click on them and download or if you want to do bulk download, you can use, you can follow instruction here. It requires you to have wget or curl and you can use that and download. So you can, you can save all these links as URLs and then use wget to, to get all the files at the same time. Also, once you save these files as NetCDF file, you can use this GDAL translate function if you are familiar with that. Uh, from NetCDF file, you can pick each variable. So you can start with ET and then you can save it as TIFF file. So this is also possible, but we are going to follow the first uh, step that we saw that save one parameter at a time as TIFF files because there are not that many files and we can just click and download data. So that's how you can download uh, GLDAS data. Once you have saved all these data, uh, we will be analyzing them uh, in next week uh, and see how different water budget components uh, behave in dry and wet season over the Limpopo River Basin. So uh, with that, we this demonstration is, is concluded. What you will do is now start with exercise one uh, that you must have downloaded uh, from our set website or it's also available from this portal here uh, from the meeting site. You can download that and start working on this exercise. So for this exercise, you are going to follow the same procedure but you will use a different year as I mentioned earlier. You will use 2018 and 19. So at the end of this exercise then you will have IMERGE precipitation and MODIS evapotranspiration um, similarly, similar to what Sean demonstrated. And then you will also download GRACE terrestrial water storage anomalies and GLDAS water budget components. So all these data will be uh, prepared today that we will be analyzing next week. So we are going to be here online um, and um, uh, working along with you. If you have any questions, you can start with your exercise. Um, and if you have any questions, you can type in the chat box. And we will also uh, check with you if uh, all the steps are working and all the links are working. Uh, also, uh, just a word of caution here that 
um, many people sometimes when try to access the same data it slows down uh, the website and if you have trouble uh, accessing this data right now you still have this entire week to do so but we encourage you to start working on it now so that if you have any questions or if there is any uh, problem then we can talk about it now so I'm going to stop here and you can start working on the exercise thank you So the demonstrations have been concluded and now this is the lab time and also question answer time. So what you will be doing is um, download the step by step exercise for this week, exercise one, and start acquiring the data, uh, starting with iMerge, uh, then Grace and GLDAS, as uh, you saw a note, um, since LPDAC is down perhaps modis data you may not be able to download right now but uh, you have this entire week to download this data we will use some of this data next week and then the week after so you can start downloading the data uh, if you have any trouble you can uh, ask us now or type in the uh, question box and uh, we are going to be here and see if um, we can help in any way but between now and next week it's important to download all the data and save on your computer so we can start working with uh, exercises in week two and three uh, hopefully you have been able to download some data and we also see a number of questions in in the question answer uh, document here so um, we will go through some of the questions some are very important and uh, informative so we can start with the question and answer session here while you can keep working on downloading the data or um, you can also continue doing that between now and next Tuesday when we have our next session. So um, we've already, the questions have been answered and they will be posted on the RSET website after the, after the, the webinar is over. But some of the questions that are important, uh, want to go over them. Uh, this question two is, regarding slide two is it possible to change the special resolution to a higher resolution like 30 meters for hydrology modeling so um, the answer is that you can interpolate data at whatever resolution you like such as like 30 meters or you know but you're not really creating any um, independent or more accurate information at every point. It is simply whatever information you have at lower resolution, you are just using some rule to interpolate it either bilinearly or linearly or... Um, so not only you don't have independent information, it, it, we don't know whether it's right or not. At, at, at every 30 meter resolution so that's the chance you take but for ease of calculation you can definitely do that um, to see uh, do that at 30 meters and for forcing hydrologic models it has been done so it is possible to do that but one has to keep in mind that uh, you're not really having independent data at every 30 meter Uh, question three is something I don't understand. How can we estimate soil moisture from remote sensing using QGIS or other software rather than using SMAP data? So um, I'm not aware of that. And Sean, if you know if there is any inbuilt algorithm available in QGIS where you can estimate soil moisture data, I, I'm not aware of any such um, method or software in QGIS that can give you soil moisture. Uh, 
Um, so question four is about GLDAS and GDAS. No, they are not the same systems. GLDAS is specifically land data assimilation system. It, it is just a land surface model. It does water and energy balance in, at Earth's surface in which atmospheric uh, weather parameters and radiation, they are used as forcing. Um, so that's what GLDAS is. GDAS, on the other hand, is data assimilation to atmospheric model. So GDAS is global data assimilation system that ANSEP developed for weather forecasting and working with atmospheric models. Now question five is, is very important. Um, it, which is the, what is the smallest basin area you would recommend for working with these water budget data? So uh, we will, as we, we will go through data analysis next week and in the last week, we will see that um, data sets have been made available at certain resolutions, such as GRACE data we will use at one degree resolution. Uh, GLDAS has one degree resolution and some versions also have quarter degree resolutions. But if you are just speaking based on remote sensing data, uh, GRACE data has three by three degree, about approximately uh, three by three degree um, resolution, so about 150,000 kilometers square, actually. So that that's one footprint of grace is about three degree by three degree. So even if you interpolate and make it one degree by one degree, you don't have independent groundwater information or, or terrestrial water information at one degree. So basically, ideally, if you're just using uh, remote sensing data, then that should be the limit. You, it's it's uh, 300 to 400 uh, by 300 to 400 kilometers. That's approximately the size that you have one place for footprint. So that's the smallest basin you can work with. If you use something like GLDAS, then you can go smaller, higher resolution, and because there is quarter degree, so it's about um, one tenth of what you have here, so uh, no, even smaller, so that you can go go smaller. Um, so this this would be like 25 by 25 kilometer square area. So depending on what you're using, uh, you, you your basin size has to be limited. Again, we will see that. There's always trade-off between resolution. If you just have remote sensing data such as GRACE, if you go to uh, modeling, you have higher resolution, more frequent data, but then it, the, the, your accuracy depends on the type of model you use. So it, it's a combination of factors that you have to consider. But, but so bottom line is just based on remote sensing, it is uh, three by three degrees and for GLDAS, you can go about quarter degree by quarter degree. Uh, how was the wet and dry period selected in analysis? We'll see that next week. Um, and we'll, that will show you that for your own region, how would you decide which is um, a wet and dry season? Um, question seven, yes, data are available for these are global data that we're talking about so that's fine uh, question eight how accurate are these data and where can this analysis be used in the real world i mean that's the question that um, we don't have one answer for all the regions because uncertainties are there uh, they vary from region to region. If you go through validation studies of different data sets such as GPM iMERGE, MODIS 80, uh, GRACE data, and GLDAS data, um, published literature where uh, local measurements are compared with uh, these measurements, uncertainties can be as high as like larger than 30% in some places, it could be as low as 5%. So there's no one number that we can say that, okay, this is accurate by this person. It has to be done 
region by region. So the recommendation here is that um, once you pick, once you know this is the basin, is it big enough that um, GLDAS or remote sensing data can resolve this basin? How many uh, data points I can get from these data sets? And then on top of that, you have to have some independent measurements. You can, you can validate each component uh, with surface-based measurements, but if you have stream gauge or discharge data, that is really very good. You can see whether precipitation minus evapotranspiration, if you look at that parameter, if that is showing how discharge data is changing in your basin, you will have more confidence in, in these data sets. So again, uh, there is no one clear answer for how much ac how accurate these data sets are. Also, you have to see that the existing data and methodology you use for the river basin of your interest, how accurate that is, and um, how the uh, how would you compare that with these remote sensing measurements? So these are are the are are, are the questions that only you can answer knowing your own region and your own river basin characteristics. The idea here is that okay, here are all these data sets with these advantages and limitations. And here is the procedure how you can estimate bulk uh, water budget components over a basin and then go on from there, see how useful it is for your own region. So question nine, will QGIS read a net CDF file? And yes, it can. But I believe that for raster calculations, uh, you probably have to have a TIFF file. And Sean, you can correct me if I am wrong. Question 10 is how do you get the approximate bounding box need to use QGIS, any function? So QGIS, of course, as Sean mentioned here, you can look at your shape file and in QGIS, it, if you go around, it will give you let lawn boxes. In GS disk and Giovanni uh, also, you can just go to the region of your interest and draw a box. There is a way you can just draw a box. And then there is a window where it shows which let lawn you picked. And that tells you that this is the bounding box. Uh, question 11, are data sets available for all the river basins across the globe? So as you can see, data have global extent. Whether all river basins are re resolved or not, that, that is, um, ans the answer is no, because uh, resolution is limited here, uh, special resolution. So not all river basins are uh, resolved, but major river basins are resolved by these data sets globally. Question 12 is something that we mentioned earlier, uh, but that is true. Uh, calibration also necessary for these data sets since they are remote sensing derived. Absolutely, I think it's, it's very important. Uh, these data have to be calibrated and somehow validated for your own region. Uh, and this has been done. Uh, people take remote sensing observations of, say, precipitation, evapotranspiration, and in the area of their interest, if you have surface-based measurements, you can calibrate with that. Are there any biases? Uh, can you remove those biases from remote sensing data? So that has been done. Um, and uh, indirectly, if you have something like discharge data or stream flow data, you can compare um, the precipitation and evapotranspiration differences with that, you can see how um, GLDAS best surface runoff and TWS, total water storage, what kind of uh, relationship do they show with uh, river discharge in your river basin. So uh, it really is a little bit of research before you can actually apply. And that, that's very important to note here that these data sets are there, they are global, that these are the resolutions to apply them in your own uh, region you would first look at the size of the river basin that you're interested in 
are these data valid for that? Are they providing you independent and accurate information? And next, you calibrate with some in situ or in basin data that gives you confidence in, in what you see here. So I would say that even if you cannot, um, if, if the total amount of water that you get from these data, um, month by month, you may not be find very accurate, but change will show that whether water availability is increasing or decreasing that uh, I believe that remote sensing data and modeling data can definitely help in, in, in monitoring that compared to last year, compared to last season, is the water av availability going up or down? Um, precipitation, evapotranspiration data are operationally uh, used for drought monitoring and looking at wet and dry spells. So yes, um, data are useful but they have to be calibrated. That's the bottom line. Uh, GLDAS data, how do you remove the seasonal cycle from grace data sets? Uh, I don't think I completely understand the question. Uh, are you, if you're talking about grace data assimilation uh, in, um, in GLDAS, um, I don't think you are removing annual cycle. If you want to remove annual cycle from any data like GLDAS or GRACE independently, what you would do is take long-term monthly climatology, month by month, take January climatology, February climatology, and so on all the way through December, and then subtract that from each month that removes annual cycle from any data. Uh, there's a question here in the chat box. Is it possible to do the exercise with ArcGIS? And absolutely, yes, um, you can do this. We use QGIS because it is open source, but ArcGIS, you can definitely use that. So we'll, we'll talk about question 13 more in last session when we talk about GLDAS. Uh, Question 14, if you would like to do this analysis for a long period of time, is the procedure to do is one month by one month. Um, so as Sean has referred to it here, you can do it annually. You have MODIS annual data. Uh, from GLDAS, uh, you have monthly as well as daily data, or you can make a annual accumulation from that. Um, it depends on, are you looking at season to season or month, year to year changes? If you do want to see seasonal changes, you will have to start with monthly data. If you're just interested in year to year variation, then you can just look at annual uh, accumulation of data. How, question 15 is how do we test the accuracy of GRACE data? Um, so uh, I think it's a, we recommend that you review the GRACE webinar that was offered by RSET last month. Some of these points are covered in there. Um, first of all, GRACE footprint is large and only way you can validate it is if you have monitoring wells taking like, um, water level and then you can compare with grace data and see uh, again if that's a point measurement versus a big footprint but in the webinar there is a paper referred to where in the u.s about 4,000 wells are used to compare with uh, groundwater data from uh, gildas model in which grace is assimilated same can be done um, with grace data if you have monitoring well um, based on algorithm validation, um, and again, the papers are there in this webinar, is the GRACE terrestrial water storage anomalies have errors of about two to three centimeters. 
Um, and this is so it's about 10 to 20 percent errors, you can say. Um, if I downloaded a NetCDA file, can I extract the individual files from it to use, or do I have to use them combined all the time? No, you can extract. And if you go back to the demonstration, um, there is a link there. Uh, there's a GDAL script that is available that you can use to extract each parameter from a NetCDA file and convert to a TIFF file. Or I, I guess you can also save as NetCDF file parameter by parameter. But you, it, you only way I know is to do it by using that GDAL um, command. Uh, instead of downloading precipitation data separately from December to February, then June to August, September, what will happen if I downloaded continuous data and why not for complete calendar year? Yes, you can do it for complete calendar year. Um, you can do it for two years to see contrast from year to year. Here, we this is more to show the procedure. And so uh, when we do lab time, we have about an hour to work with. So we decided, okay, let's stick to wet and dry seasons. So then, if you download all of the data, um, because the resolution here are it's monthly, you will have month by month data, no matter what period you pick. Either you do December to February, and then June to August, September, or you can pick them all and decide to download whichever month you like. So, but yes, you can look at the entire annual cycle you know, if you're interested in that. So again, as we saw in the demonstration today, again, this is question 17 I'm answering about data. In Giovanni, you can accumulate over a season. With GES disk, you, are, you, you can only download monthly data or whatever the resolution of the temporal resolution of the data is. And then you have to accumulate it by, by yourself. So it depends on what, which data set and which uh, tool is available uh, to download the data. How do geophysical parameters measure the uh, uh, question 18, I think, was there before also? Uh, question one, how do geophysical parameters, so one and 18 are the same. Um, so evaporation and transpiration, they're not observed directly from remote sensing, but remote sensing based other geophysical parameters, such as surface temperature, land surface temperature, vegetation, so um, near surface humidity, soil moisture, these can help in calculating ET. And again, next week when we talk about MODIS ET, uh, later on we will see that uh, from thermal energy balance of the surface, then um, evapotranspiration is actually calculated. So it, it's not a direct measurement, it's a derived measurement from remote sensing. Is this method valid for arid and semi-arid arid regions? Uh, yes, the method is valid for arid and semi-arid regions, but um, the data sets that we are using, they may be more accurate for one region than another. And that is something you have to calibrate and validate for your own region. For example, MODIS ET that we are using, it is believed that it is better in, in more humid region than in arid region. But that, that you have to check out for your own region. Uh, so, why Grace data downloaded for September while others through August? Because uh, when you look at water balance equation, it's the when precipitation and evapotranspiration over a month occurs, that results in change of groundwater. So we are taking, say, suppose you want 
groundwater change or terrestrial water change for um, for December, then you are you have to take difference between January and December. That gives you that change in water storage due to P minus E in December. And we will see again next week when we go through this exercise, we will reiterate this. And that's why we have one more month, one more month than the last month, because change in water storage in August can be calculated only when you have September and August water storage both. Um, question 21, when I click on plot data, I receive this message, Giovanni result initiate service request failed. Hmm. Yeah, please check all the parameters. And there is also a feedback button on Giovanni. Yeah, you also need to log in with NASAR data, check all the parameters. And there's a feedback button on Giovanni where you can let them know also that this is the error message you're getting and they might be able to solve if it's a genuine problem. But first thing is to check all the inputs and everything. Yeah, question 22, would it be possible to give us a list of software or tools Yes, I think uh, we can do that. We will uh, we will keep that in mind. We usually do that in the beginning of the exercise, but may, maybe we can do that in the beginning of the series, then it's easier for you to follow. That was question 22. Question 23, while downloading the GLDAS data, for this case, the number of links are only 11, so it's not a difficult thing, to learn, but yes. So um, again, if you go through the demonstration, you will see that there is, a, and when you go through the download step, you will see there is a wget or curl option. You get a list of all the URLs that you picked. And there is also a link to save those URLs as, in a file. So all the files, if you have 100 files, you have links to those 100 files in a file, in a text file. And then you can use a wget or curl command to with that text file, which has all the files, your URLs listed. And then you will you will get one by one files um, from GSTS. And you don't have to click on individual file. So um, the reason we did not go through it is you also need to make sure that you have wget and curl on your computer. So you have to install that. The instruction is there on GES disk again, how to do that, how to install wget or curl, depending on which system you're using. It's Windows or Mac or Linux. Oh, are you going to see any way to obtain data using Python, JavaScript, or any other language? Um, for, for this webinar, we have not considered that. Uh, that's why we, we, we have used just online tools and QGIS where it's mostly through GUI that we are interacting with data and calculating things. But in future, um, if there is a demand, we might think of um, providing some scripts in Python or Java. If um, RSET has, uh, is conducting quite, quite a few webinars now using GEE and with some JavaScript samples. So if the data sets are available in Google Earth Engine, we can go that route. Can we use GFS data for precipitation the model during floods? The, that's the global forecasting system, I believe. I, I that's that's a model precipitation data, and um, you you can definitely check it out. And there are quite a few data sets available. You can use GFS if you. Uh, there is also forecast available um, 
72 hour forecast from GFS. So you you definitely can check it out whether it's accurate in your region. So no, TIFF file uh, for questions 26. There is a TIFF file and TIFF, TIFF MD5, but you will get TIFF file. MD5 files are the digest files. They just talk about whether, you know, it just gives you indication whether this file was complete or corrupt. So it, this is not the file you want. You want just dot .tif files. Again, if you go through the Grace webinar, it, it, it talks about this digest file. Uh, this is uh, the question 27. The data resolution is coarse, at least one degree resolution. How can you get final resolution, for example, at district or provincial level? Uh, this is really a um, very important question. Um, as we saw, precipitation and evapotranspiration data, they are um, 500 meters to about one tenth of a degree high resolution data. But if you want groundwater data, you don't have high resolution data. If you look, if you use GLDAS, then the highest resolution is quarter degree. In certain cases, such as in NLDAS data, you have one eighth of a degree data also. So you can only try and interpolate this data, but then they're not independent data at that resolution. You have to keep that in mind. Best thing is to try it out, get this data and try and interpolate within um, district or province using either terrain as a predictor or uh, land cover as a predictor. And there, there is a research going on on that, how to, to downscale uh, various data sets. But then again, it, it's a very regional problem. There, there, no one answer or solution fits everywhere. Can you suggest any source from where I can learn how to download multiple links using WGET? It may be required if I need to download GLDAS data for a longer period. Yes. So. Um, uh, since this question has appeared once or twice, uh, next time, I, if we have time, when we work with GLDAS data, I'll try and show you how to do that, uh, how, how to do it with GL, uh, WGET. Can we separate evaporation and crop transpiration data using uh, satellite data products? I believe that data we are using is strictly evapotranspiration data where you have vegetation data. Um, in models, yes, there is evaporation and uh, crop or vegetation transpiration data. They are available from models. But from satellites, um, it's a it, product we are using is ET, which vegetated surface. So no, you you don't, you cannot decide what evaporation is from non-vegetated area. iMerge has different options for sub-daily download. Which one should we use? Um, for this webinar, we are using seasonal accumulation, but if you are interested in using sub-daily data, um, Depends on if you, final version is the research quality version. There is early and late version, which is up to date, but it is not calibrated or with rain gauge data. So it, it's that it's different than the final product. Depending on the application, you would choose which data to use. Many people talk about errors in ECMWF models. So how do we justify the validity of our results while using GRACE? 
how do we get the error bar for ECMWF? So these questions always come up about accuracy and unfortunately the answer is that unless you have in situ data where you are uh, you want to use this data there is no answer we cannot say that okay it's 10 percent accuracy or 15 or it, there's no way there has to be validation regionally at the area of your interest either direct or indirect either you you look at some other parameters and say okay looks like this model or data are correct um, so that's the only way to put error bars on any ECMWF or GRACE or any data, you have to have in situ data to compare that with. If you go on these websites for ECMWF or GLDAS or iMERGE, uh, GPM or any, there are validation campaigns. Um, there are sites where um, NASA and other agencies, they take in situ measurements and do detailed validation. So based on that, you can gauge what kind of error bars you might have, but the absolute certain way to do it is to compare in your own region with in-situ data. Uh, I think we are um, just coming to the end of this session. Um, really, thank you very much for attending today's session, and uh, we will see you next week at the same time. Uh, hopefully, by then, you will have downloaded all the data so that um, we can start working uh, with um, estimating different water budget components and seeing seasonal differences as well as combined P minus E and see how things look uh, from remote sensing and then from GLDAS. So good questions here, um, and uh, we will continue our discussion in subsequent weeks. So thank you again. Sean, if you want to add anything, please go ahead and add. Uh, we want to thank the RSET team here for helping us. We have uh, um, Brock Levins, Jonathan O'Brien, Selwyn Odoi, Hudson Odoi, and uh, Sean and myself, we thank you all for attending.